Welcome to another moment in the Word. Has your worship ever included shouting? Has your praise ever caused you to, to exclaim with a loud voice? Well, as we look at the scriptures, and particularly now this feast, we're in Leviticus chapter 23, and we're looking at verses 24 and 25, and we're looking at the Feast of Trumpets. And here's what it says, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing the trumpets, a holy convocation. And you shall do no servile work therein, and you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now, there's two key words that I want you to focus on there, and that is the word memorial. It's a memorial. It is a remembrance. It is something that is done repeatedly to recall something, much like the Lord's table. This is to be done in remembrance of his death on the cross for you, for me, for you. If you know him as your Savior and Lord, it should cause you to shout. And it, not only that, but no servile work. In other words, everything that you have as a routine, it should be laid aside. You should be focusing on now what is the eminence of this shouting. Well, this particular occasion is on the seventh month, the first day of the month, and it's called Rosh Hashanah by many of the Jewish people. And that is a secular, a civil holiday in which they remember the creation of the world, particularly the creation of Adam. But the word in the Hebrew, as we look at Leviticus, it is Yom Tura, and that means the feast of blowing or the feast of shouting. You see, the word trumpet could be a metal trumpet, oftentimes made of silver, or it could be a ram's horn, as we see here, that's called a shofar. In both cases, that is not the word that is used here. It is instead the word blowing to ura, which means blowing or shouting. There were 100 shoutings or blowings of the trumpet that would be made on this particular day. In other words, they would be blowing all day long. It was a really important event. And there were four kinds of blowing, so it would be much like a bugle call where you would have a short and a long sound, and they would be by that in some way communicating a message. Well, the blowing would be made by what was called a watchman. And the word watchman simply means one who looks out. In the ancient city of Jerusalem, there would be on various corners of the wall a watchman, and they would blow the trumpet, and they would have various reasons. We find in Genesis chapter 8, verse 13, the first time we find this word watch. And it's when Noah he had landed the ark, and you may remember that was on the day of Pentecost, lands the ark, and then after he lands the ark, there are four months that pass, and he looks out, and he watches. He indeed sees the surface of the ground that it's dry, and he's able to then depart from. He's free. He's able to leave the ark. He went through the judgment. And so watchmen in the Bible, they are guards that are responsible for protecting towns, military installations against surprise enemy attacks. But there were other reasons. Let me give you five reasons that are the secular reasons why we find the trumpet to be sound. The first was when there were physical threats. So we have in the book of Judges, chapter 6, and verse 34, uh, we have that Joshua is going around the walls of Jericho. And you may remember there are seven trumpets that will sound. And these are the priests that are carrying the Ark of the Covenant. And 
all the nation was to shout, and they did that every day. And on the, on the seventh day, they did it seven times, 13 times. They shouted, and that shout was an aggressive shout. It was a shout of attack, and the walls came down. Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 18, he describes very similarly. This time they're rebuilding the walls, and as they're rebuilding the walls, they would have in one hand their trowel. On the other hand, they would have their sword. And when the trumpet sounded, that's when they were to take the sword and apply that. So we find that the sword was used during times of attack. It was also used during times of coronation. In other words, Absalom one time said, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, you'll know that I'm king. It was also to protect fields. So during harvest time, God says in chapter 5 of Isaiah, he says, I have put a watchtower in the field that I have planted. Jesus describes in Matthew 2 the same thing, that there was a field where he sowed, and when he sowed, he also put a watchtower. In other words, there was somebody posting guard to make sure there weren't any foxes that would destroy the vineyard or that there weren't any poachers that would come and take the harvest. And then we find also there were sentinels that actually sounded every day, like the rooster. They sounded the new day. It was reveille. It was the sound of a new day, new dawn. And so we find that in Psalm 130 and verse 6, where David says, My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than they who watch for the morning. But the idea of the sound of the trumpet or the shouting also has a biblical meaning. I like to turn to e Ezekiel and chapter 33 and verses 2 to 6. And he says, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring a sword into the land, if the people of the land take a man of their borders and set him for their watchman, if he sees the sword come upon the land, and he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever hears the sound of the trumpet and takes not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be on his own head." He that heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning, he shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and they take away any person from among them, he is taken away of his own iniquity but his blood will I require of the watchman's hand. So the watchman has a very important job. He's to sound the alarm. He is to make known that imminent danger is here. And that's what we see here. The first time we actually hear this whole idea of the voice of God is when we are in Genesis in chapter 3 and verse 6. Adam and Eve have sinned. They've eaten of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and they hear. What do they hear? They hear the voice of God as he walks in the garden, and they hid themselves. They hid themselves because they heard the voice, the warning of God's presence. The Israelites, when they are at Mount Sinai and they're about to receive the Torah, there we have the law that is about to be given. And the Israelites, they didn't blow a shofar, but they heard the voice of the Lord descend upon the mountain. It's really interesting. This is also a time when the Jubilee would be given. So it is sometimes a time of warning, a time of great distress because the enemy is attacking. But sometimes it's a time of joy and celebration as it was for those with Joshua around the walls of Jericho. You see, this could also be 
the time of the Jubilee. And the word Jubilee in the Hebrew, it means ram. You see, this was a time when judgment was about to come and there was freedom. In fact, that's what you find even around the rim of the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia, where we find it was a day of atonement that was then celebrating the liberation that comes by the blood of the ram. And we find that Jesus is the one who is not only the lamb of God, he is the ram of God. You see, this was first pictured back in Genesis 22, where Isaac was laid on the altar, and he was about to experience judgment. And then the Lord spoke and restrained Abraham, and he looked up and he saw a ram caught in a thicket. Every time the shofar is blown, it's a reminder of redemption. It's a reminder of freedom, of liberty, because the ram, the male lamb, was sacrificed in Isaac's place. We find in Leviticus 25 that the day of atonement was the beginning of the year of Jubilee. But remember now, this is the first day of the seventh month. Ten days later is the day of Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. This, when you look at it, there's no meat involved, no meal involved, no bread involved. There was for Passover. There was for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. There was for first fruits. There was for Pentecost. But there is no meat involved here. This is why Jesus says man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You see, there was a famine in the land, says the prophet, a famine not of bread, but a famine of the word of God. You see, it is the importance of knowing the word of God and the eminence of judgment that's about to come. And so these, this day marks the day of the beginning of the 10 days of awe, the 10 days of worship, the 10 days of examination and solemn reflection on who we are and what it is that we need to repent of. That brings us then to the next feast, which will be the feast of Yom Kippur. But I want you to see that this is a time of reflection and a time when the need of the soul needs to be fed, not with bread, that's a physical need. There is a need of your spirit and your soul to know the word of God. And then you find in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17 that the watchmen were not just prophets of the Old Testament. They're the, the elders, the pastors, those who are the shepherds of the flock in the New Testament. And notice what it says in that passage. He says, obey those that rule over you and be submissive for they watch out for your souls. And they have to give an account for what they have done in the body of Christ. Well, judgment is near, isn't it? We have a time in which Jesus says in Matthew 24, that he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and he will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul writes, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible and shall change. Oh, what a day that will be when the assembly is made because we heard the trumpet. And you hear the trumpet if you are a true believer. You will know when the trump sounds. For in 1 Thessalonians and chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, great passage. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall be raised first. And then we who are alive and remaining shall be caught up with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we forever be with the Lord. It's with the sound of a trumpet, a reminder to us of the ram that died in our place to set us free, or Revelation 
the great warning in Revelation chapter 11, where we find that there is the seventh angel sounding, and there was great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Messiah, his Christ, and he shall reign forever and forever. It all depends upon whether you're hearing the trumpet and you're on the Lord's side. And you know victory is yours if you're on the Lord's side. You have freedom. You have liberty. But if you don't know the Lord, then his return and his coming is an attack. And all that we have built in this world, the things of this world, will pass away because he is king, he is Lord, he is God. I pray you truly know him as your Savior and as your Lord. Let's pray. Thank you again, Father, for the reminder, even from the sound of it so far, that it is your calling us to repent and to align ourselves with you, acknowledge our sin, and to acknowledge that only the blood of the Ram, the blood of the Lamb of God, can take away our sin. Thank you, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.